God, I love you tonight. You may be seated. Uh, said singing about the Holy Ghost rain falling down on us. Amen. I don't know if you like the natural rain or not. But we've lived in a place up in Oregon, and I think it rained all year long except for two weeks, maybe. That rain, it just comes straight down. It rains straight down. In California, it blows in, you know, from the sides. But it rains straight down, and everything was wet. It was wet. All the beautiful green, really green. If you love green, you love Oregon and Washington. But the reason why it's green is because it's wet. Yeah. 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 Even the weeds is green up there. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. But I love to be in the presence of the Lord. In the presence of the Lord, there is liberty. Yes, yes. Yeah. Where the Spirit of the Lord, there is released a liberty. That means the freedom to worship the Lord in yeah. spirit and truth. Yeah. Yeah. And so when you and I as believers come together and have fellowship one with the other, He joins us. We're two or three together yeah. together. In my name, yes. I'm in the midst thereof. And the scripture tells us that he goes and he searches all on the earth to try to hear someone call upon his name. Yes. He's so eager that he searches to hear us sing about him and talk about him. Amen. Wow. And as soon as he hears someone talking about him or singing about him, he shows up. Yep. You, you can be in a conversation over the phone with somebody. I've sat in many coffee shops down through the years, drank coffee I didn't even want. Uh, ate with that stuff I didn't even didn't even want to eat. But because I felt like that God wanted me there for a reason with the individual that's sitting there, and I'm aware and I'll say, Lord, here's the meeting. I invite you to join us. Sometime in this conversation, turn this conversation the way you'd have it to be. And at any moment, I'm saying, Lord, help me be sensitive. That when they start talking, let me ring my bell <laughs> and say, this is a, this is a notice. Yes. Yeah. They're heading in that direction. Be sensitive to the Spirit. Wow. Man. And lo and behold, we'd sit there and talk. And sometimes it would be for hours. And I had other things to do. <laughs> Places to be. People to see. But nothing was more important than that preordained yes. ministry that that one moment yes. we had. Yes. I found out down through the years, I could tell the church secretary, hey, give them a call. I didn't make it. Apologize for me. I will get over there as soon as I can. I'll make contact with them. But I was busy ministry. Wow. And at any given time, ministry spirit can open up a door of opportunity for you Amen. to minister to others. Amen. Right. I believe down through the years I've done more ministry outside of the pulpit Amen. than I've done in the pulpit. Amen. And I've preached a lot. I probably an average of two, two and a, a half sermons a week for the last 15 years, at least the last 15 years. But it's not the preaching. It's the being able to minister wherever. Whether I call out from under a car, repairing a car, which I'm not very good at. And I crawl out from under a car and minister to someone that comes by. Or whether I quickly go in and take a shower, change clothes. I've been known to take a shower three times a day and change clothes because I had to be at a, a, a hospital. And I come back home, put other work clothes on. Work for an hour or so and call. Had to go and take another shower and put clothes on and go visit with someone else. I've done it years and years. But you know what? When I resigned, you know what the people said? Can't remember a sermon you preached. <laughs> but I remember you were there right. yeah. when we were hurting. Right. When our well, wor world fell apart, you were there with us. You cried with us. And you laughed with us. And God ministered through you. See, it doesn't take the preacher. That's right. Amen. All of us are called to minister. Yes. Called to minister. And it's like the Holy Spirit wants me to tell you. Be aware this next week, the rest of this week, of opportunities 
that someone needs to be ministered to. And you are ministering spirits. I ordain you as ministering spirits. Amen. I ordain you as Amen. ministering spirits to be ready at any given moment. When that phone rings, you said, this could be it. This could be my moment to shine for the Lord. Amen. Huh? Maybe the grandkid comes in and says, I need to talk to you. You say, this is the moment. Oh, my, this is the moment I'm looking for. And she said, where's the peanut butter? <laughs> say, no, I, I, I got ready. I'm ready to go. I'm stuck on the ready. Yeah. And when they come through, I'm ready to minister to them. Amen. You and I are called to minister. Amen. You and I are called. So look for the opportunity. Look for the opportunity to minister to others. Hallelujah. Open your Bibles. Let's look. Now see, I, 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 I got the Colossians. What the Colossians? Yeah. Colossians last night. And lo and behold, it didn't read the Scripture. It just told you the text. You found the Scripture. And I jumped off talking about something else. The time I got back around, I started preaching a different sermon. Completely different sermon. You know that? Yeah. Now, that doesn't bother me. If I realize what I'm doing, I get afraid. Because I say, here you are getting out of here. How are you ever going to get back? It's not my notes. That's it. How are you going to do it? And I'm saying, Lord, you got me out here. And you're going to have to get me back. You're going to have to walk me back. I, say, I believe the Holy Spirit is able to quicken you at any given moment. Amen. And if you're not so set, you know, narrow, spiritually minded so much Amen. that you can't hear and willing to change the voice of God, don't try to put God in a box. Amen. It won't work. He's God. And God never changes. Hallelujah. All right. Look at Colossians. I think the Lord's going to really speak to us tonight. That means you got glad for God's Word. Amen. Amen. Colossians in the second chapter. All right. Now I got to reading that. And I said, that's not fair. To start in the second chapter. Because when the, when the, when the writer, especially Luke, he wrote down a lot of writing for uh, Paul. Luke traveled with Paul and done a lot of writing. He wrote the Gospel of Luke. And then also he done a lot of the, the, uh, the pen work for Luke. Now uh, Paul told him what to write, but he was a scribe. He done the scribe for him, right? Now, when they took, they didn't have chapters and verses. You know that, right? Then when they came in and canonized the, the Bible and started putting in the words, uh, the, uh, books of the Bible and, and also the wording, they divided it up in verses and chapters. Amen. Sometimes you're reading in one chapter and you get down to the end and you go to the next chapter and it really is a continuation in the original. Right. It's a continuation. But they don't. They said, you've got to follow. We've got to stop somewhere. So we assume that it is a uh, uh, subject stopped. And so they stopped starting new. But sometimes it doesn't. So when you're reading along there and your spirit doesn't bear witness with what's saying, don't worry. Jump right up in the chapter and go on it's like it's the next verse. All right? And that's what I done. I started the first verse. And I said, well, that don't kind of make sense. And maybe I'll back up to the first verse and chapter and start reading it and see if it brings in and it gives you the picture of what Paul was doing. Yeah. <sighs> Lord, thank you for the insight and thank you for the scripture. May our spiritual ear be open tonight to hear what you have to say. We're going to take the Logos word tonight from out of the word, Master, and you're going to bring back and remind us the Holy Spirit what you had in mind. And also, we're ready for the new word that you're going to give us, the rhema. And as you give us the rhema, the fresh new word that amplifies the meaning of this old. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord, for the revelation and illumination of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we ask you just to guide us into the subjects you have us to be to minister to these, your children, in Jesus' name. And everyone Amen. Say, Amen. 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 All right. Now let's back up to the, I think about as far as it goes to the 25th verse, okay? And the first chapter of Colossians. Colossians 1.25, and I'm really going to end up the second chapter, preach from that, but just hang on and work with me, all right? See what's happening. 25th verse of the first chapter of Colossians. Wherefore I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God, even 
even the mystery which have been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. Say, thank God for his manifestation. Thank God for his manifestation. Thank God for him releasing the illumination and the, uh, 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 that we can understand the mysteries of God. 27th verse. To whom God would make known what is the mystery or what is the riches of the glory of his uh, uh, min, uh, uh, yeah he, he, there, there okay his, uh, uh, among the Gentiles okay mysteries among the Gentiles which is Christ in you the hope of glory what is the ministry among the Gentiles Christ in you the hope of glory Amen. not Israel He's talking about, Paul said, it's you, the, uh, the mystery of God dealing with us is, the, is the, the, among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the whole glory. 28, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom. There's a wisdom that goes along with that whole. And there's a wisdom that goes along with that glory. Hello? Now, you know what? Wisdom is not knowledge. That's right. You can have the knowledge, but wisdom gives you how to use the knowledge. That's it. Wow. So he's given unto us that all this godly wisdom to give that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. How is it done? Through the wisdom of the knowledge of Christ Jesus. Amen. Mystery is he dwells in human eyes. I am in Christ, and Christ is in me. Yes. Glory right. to God. I have it much better than John the Baptist had. Yes. Jesus said, there's none any greater than John the Baptist. Amen. Sure. None any greater than John the Baptist. Then he says, the least in the kingdom of God was better than John. Yes. He's telling us, you and I, that we have got the Victory because we have Christ dwelling in us. It's not just in my head knowledge. Yes. Yes. Glory to God. But He inhabits me inside of me. He flows into the mystery, the hope of God, and the glory of God is manifested through what I say, what I do. Amen. I'm telling you, you're blessed. Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. And I'm blessed. I am blessed. Oh, bless, 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 bless. Okay. Now, Prince, wherein I also labor, Paul said a labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in him mightily, in me mightily. You know what he's saying? He wants spiritually to constantly release his zeal in my life. And I have to learn how to release that through my personality and through my characteristics. How many know that Jesus has saved and redeemed every one of us, but we got a different personality and a different characteristic? Amen. You could see here a hundred preachers and they would deliver it different. That's right. Because He saved us from sin, but He sanctified. Our personality. Amen. Hallelujah. So I've still got my old personality. It just happens to be sanctified. Huh? Now my character, I have to discipline it, bring it back into life. But you've got the same personality, but he has saved you and, and delivering is delivering now you from your characteristics. So how do we know that? Because you say, Pastor, my mother was mean hearted. I don't mean to be, but I'm like my mom. Or I'm like my daddy. My dad was real quick tempered. Oh, he was hot headed. He was quick tempered. And I get that from my daddy. No, you're a new creature in Christ Jesus. Amen. Behold, all things pass away and all things become new. In your new characteristic, you need to discipline yourself and readjust and let your new characteristic start being nurtured and mature in the things of God where all this hot-headedness, all this anger, all this resentment,
treatment is taken care of because you're a new creature in Christ Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Good preaching. I'll myself. I'll break my arm. Oh, look at that. Here's where I want to go now. Second chapter. For I would that you would know what great conflicts I have for you. Not with you, but for you. Paul was not complaining that he felt responsible for those believers. He was not complaining. He says, but I have a conflict for you. I know what you're struggling with. I know you, you can never experience anything that I haven't went through. Paul, every once in a while in his writings, he talks about the thorn in the flesh. We read all kinds of ideals and theories about what they think the uh, thorn in the flesh is, all these theologians. I personally believe that thorn in the flesh that when he'd go to teach in some of these churches, New Testament churches, he'd go walk through that door and they'd say, this is Apostle Paul. He used to be Saul of Tarsus. And he'd be some of them sitting there and say, yeah, I know him. He killed my great uncle who was really on fire for God. Huh? He persecuted, he was there helping when they do some stoning. He authorized, he brought the authorization to all this, and all the anger would build up inside of them. And Paul said, yeah, it's really tough on me to walk into a, a spiritual gathering because I don't know if there's going to be some of them there that's going to be mad at me or angry with me. Amen. That was my conviction. And he had to get up and teach love, Amen. forgiveness, <laughs> and redemption. He had to teach all this. You're a new creature in Christ Jesus. Old things pass away and all things become new. No wonder he could teach that. Amen. Amen. But just as you and I, he's still working and he's in conflict. Paul said, I'm in a conflict dealing with you because I know the battle that you're fighting emotionally and spiritually in your life. Amen. Now, any pastor cares for the flock. That's called God has a constant load upon his life because he knows that you have normal problems, normal adjustments. Then he sees the unseen adjustments and circumstances that comes your way. And he's constantly saying, Lord, I'm, I'm praying, I'm interceding on behalf of them that they'll have enough strength. May I preach something that will give them the hope that when their tomorrows come and they crush their tomorrows, that I've given them enough hope that they can hang on to the knot at the end of the road and say, no, God's going to be there to help you. And I think that's a conflict. He wasn't uh, uh, worried about complaining about the business, but I recognize the conflict. Okay? Now, I'm going to get down to my message, all right? What's this? Second verse? And their hearts might be comforted. That their hearts might become be knitted together in love, and to all the riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the knowledge of the mysteries of God, of the Father, and of Christ. Let me tell you, that mystery is not mysterious. The mystery is talking about is a secret that only the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost knows about. When the more of God we get in our life, and the closer we get to God, the more we're satisfied with what's going on. We don't want to know here. We just want to know it's all right in here. Amen. Uh, if you've ever been in a conflict, and I'm sure you have, in a conflict where if you stop, you'd say, I'm going crazy. If I would put my mind on this and consider this for a while, I'd probably lose my mind. But my spirit is all right with it. Let the storms blow. Let the earthquake shake. Whatever is happening or the... the uh, uh, storms, while there are hurricanes coming in, while the floods, let it all, I'd worry myself silly, lose my mind. But God, in all the mysteries of God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, yes. He's revealed unto me, you spirit, have peace. Yes. Amen. Be at peace. Amen. I've got it all under control. Because yes. nothing will come your way that you will not come through victorious. Because Jesus has already been there. 
Amen. Amen. Okay, I'm going to stay up here and I'm just going to take a reading, all right? In whom we are hid, we are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Who? And the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. But this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. Deception. But though I be absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in the spirit, joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ, as you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Rooted, build it up in him, established in his faith, and, and as ye, I got marked over that thing, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Be aware lest any man will spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the tradition of man, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. But in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principalities and power. You are complete in him, which is the head of all principalities and power. The head is talking about Jesus. In whom also ye are circumcised with circumcision made without hands, and putting off the body of the sins of the flesh, by the, the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, wherein also you are raised with him through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead. And ye have been dead in your sins and in the circumcision of your flesh have ye quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. How much? All. All, all trespasses. Fourteen. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances. That's all the, the ceremonial laws and all the little how-tos and why-nots. Blotted all them out for you and I. That was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross, and having spoiled principalities, and power, he made a, a show, made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Now, I want you to look especially at that 15th verse. He says that Jesus, when he hung on the cross and rose on the third day, he hung on the cross and died for my sin and your sin. Amen. He said that whosoever believeth upon him shall feel redeemed and his sins shall be forgiven of him. That's enough for me. Amen. But, he said that's not all. When he rose on the third day, he went, ascended to the right hand of the Father Amen. to make intercession for all of our needs and to be the attorney to explain to the Father about us. Amen. You and I have friends in high places. Yes. Amen. We got one friend in high places and that's enough. Amen. All right? And he said that the right hand of the Father, Paul said, here's the mystery that God has revealed to me. In that mystery, when Jesus died and he rose and ascended into the heaven, he took the power of principalities and power of wickedness and death away from Satan. Amen. Took it all away from Satan. All Satan has now is lies and deception. Amen. Now, how many knows he's good at it? Amen. Huh? He's good at it. Okay? Now, to us as believers, he's only as good at it as we allow him to be. Because right. the mystery that Paul's saying, all this, the power of the principalities and the spirit, uh, the spirit of wickedness has been given unto us to live victorious. Paul says that he literally made an open shame yes. of Jesus. Amen. Now, what he's saying is, is that when Jesus rose back to the Father, he paraded Satan 
down the streets of glory as a defeated foe. Amen. He said, I want all the angels, I want all the heavens to see this man in his defeated foe. This he used to be Lucifer. Son of the morning. Leader of the music. He, all this, one, over one third of the angels. Because of that, look, he sinned. This is the payday for sin. Amen. He went back and Paul said exactly what happened. He said, when that mystery was revealed to me, I seen, I seen the power of the Roman government. That when they start taking these countries over, and they'd go and capture these wicked kings that thought they had it all together. Big armies, artillery, and, and, and captains and, and generals had wisdom and understanding how to fight, how to kill. I, I was, Paul said, I've seen that. And then when another king would rise and overthrow him with his army, he'd take all the spoils. And the spoils were that of value. Then he's probably taken them from other countries. And when he came in and conquered that general of Rome, he conquered him all. And then he would take back and parade him in captivity. Having chained his feet and his hands, sometimes have a rope around his neck. He did, he meant to embarrass him. Amen. In our world, he wouldn't be polit politically correct. He meant to embarrass him. Bring him up. If, if somehow they couldn't capture him and they're still alive, they would bring his head and his body separate. And they would say, I want you to look at this. As you get a good look at it now, if you ever hear about this man threatening you, don't believe him. You saw him. Head separated from body. You saw him in a defeated foe. Don't allow him to intimidate you any longer. Don't you allow him to have one hour of your mind of a fear that he might come your way and rob you and destroy you. Because you've seen the man dead. And the Roman government says, I want everybody to see. Take your time. If you ever hear that he's getting an army together and he's going to come back and terrorize us. You said, no, no, no. I've seen him. I seen the results of him. He is graveyard dead. That man is graveyard dead. Don't have to worry about him. And I refuse to let him try to deceive me that he's going to take this away from me. Destroy my hope that I have in God. Or take my family. Now Paul said, this is what Jesus did. He paraded him through the town. Amen. I want you to know, have you seen the parade? In your mind, can you see the parade? I mean, let's get together and go to the Christmas parade. Now, man, you have all kinds of stupid little floats. People riding bicycles with crepe paper around it, wheels and whistles and, and bells and all that kind of stuff. Then you go and look at the Rose Bowl parade in Pasadena. You can't even get that uh, entrance into that thing unless you use real roses. Every one of those floats has millions. Live, live roses. The last minute, I mean the last 24 hours, they're sticking roses on all of those. So every one of those, those that enters those floats are covered with nothing but roses. Millions of dollars. And they're dead in a couple, three days. No lie. Look at that Macy's parade. What, the first day of the year, is it? Yes. People get up in the white west coats. Man, they get up before God does. Yes. Just to be able to watch TV and not miss the, uh, the uh, Macy's. Huh? And, and within, what, two hours or so? It's all over with. Yeah. Listen, the Lord said, talk to him about the parade that I've had of the devil's future. When he starts reminding you of the past, you stop reminding him of the future. 
said, yeah, you're right, you're right. Yeah, I did that. Uh -huh. Yes, I did. I did that when I was before I came to the Lord. You got me. You got me there. Not going to lie about it. They don't like it, but that's me. That's me. That's my life. But let me tell you about you and I say it. The Bible says that the end's coming. And Jesus Himself is going to come down and bind you and cast you in the bottomless pit. That's what's in store. For. i got to tell you of what's going to happen to you. If you're going to remind me of the past, let me tell you about your future. Yeah. I'm going to prophesy about your future and foretell a little bit of what's going to happen in your life. According to the Word of God, you're doomed. Amen. You will not overthrow God. Amen. You better enjoy the little throne you've got now because you're not going to have one you get to hell. The Bible says it's going to bind him and cast him in the bottomless pit. Wow. Forever and ever. I mean, no, that's a long time. Amen. 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 For a thousand years, it's going to bind him in all the demons. And you and I, for a millennial reign, they call it. You and I are going to reign with the Lord while the enemy is bound. I wonder how it'd be not to be oppressed. Now, man, I tell you what. He still tries to use fear. And he tries to use a hopelessness. But you know what? I'm going to tell you today. You don't have to listen. Amen. You don't have to. In fact, when you listen, you know what you're doing? You're agreeing with him. That's it. You're coming in covenant with him. When you start believing his lies and you let his lies you know, come into your mind. And you harbor that into your mind. It's not long until he uses fantasies about those lies. Amen. Wow. And you're saying, oh my goodness. God's revealing some of these things. Ugly things are going to happen. No, it's not. It's the devil. It's the devil. You don't have to listen. Stomp your foot. Say, no, no. I know what's happened to you. I went to the parade. Yeah. Made an open show. Remember when you were in the biology class in high school? They made you go and, and dissect those little in, insects? Huh? They take those little insects and then dissect them? Huh? Once they dissect them, they would take and pin them up on a little uh, uh, cardboard display. And then they'd write underneath it what kind of an insect it was. Huh? And they'd tell all about it. That's exactly what God done to, to death. He nailed him to the cross with the same nails. And he says, here's an example of what's happening to this man. Don't be afraid. Now, sometimes now the demonic spirits will follow through and try to make you think the devil. But the devil's already, he's already doomed, okay? And you have more control of the principalities and the spirit of wickedness how do you know what's going to happen? You don't. That's why the Holy Spirit prays through you. When the Holy Spirit prays through you, it, it fights the battle ahead of time. Amen. But He wants you and I to rest that you don't have to worry about demonic activity. Because right. greater is He that's in you than He that's in the world. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Do not take time. Don't tolerate it. You hear that? Don't tolerate the enemy. He's a liar. He's a father of all lies. And you tell him that. You tell him. Oh, no, God, 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 this scares me to death. You just don't know what he can do. You just don't know. Yeah, I know what he can do. I know what he thinks he can do. Amen. Scripture says he's like a roaring lion. He's not even a roaring lion. He's like a roaring lion. Seeking him in the day may devour. Being an old roaring lion, he doesn't even have the teeth. He'd have to dumb you to death if he caught you. Doesn't even have any teeth. He's a whore out. So he's a fake no matter what. Quit running. Quit being nervous. Quit looking over your shoulder. Get on doing the kingdom of God. If the enemy whispers something, I don't believe it. You come too late. Huh? Be like Nehemiah of old. So no, I'm too busy to come down and talk to you. 
It's a waste of time. I'm about to be building this wall and completing things for God and then to come down and talk with you. He said that one time he had to mix some water and lay the brick and hold the sword in the other hand. He was determined to do God's will Amen. for his life. Yeah. I'm telling you, church, the battle's not over until Jesus comes. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. Well, as soon as he splits the clouds of glory, you won't have to worry about it. But until then, my heart will go on singing. <laughs> until then, something else with joy, with joy I'll carry on. Until the day my eyes behold that city, until the day God calls me home. Voice wasn't worth much. We got the point over. It'll be on YouTube. Well, when, when am I going to? Uh, uh, when is it going to be over with? Only until Jesus comes. <laughs> it's going to be over and only until Jesus comes. You can erase that part, can't you? <laughs> oh, 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 that's bad news. I forgot I was going to do that. Okay. One head wonder. That's why it's going to be. Now listen. He said the principalities. Now you know that. That's a system. The system in the, in the heavens. Okay? Now listen, I want to tell you too. Don't get so worried about fighting the fight against the devil and the warfare. Amen. That's true. Jesus won the war on Calvary. Amen. Amen. It's the devil's business to tell you that it's still going on. He's a defeated foe. So since he's trying his best to tell you and you try to get a spiritual warfare and you're fighting the principal, it's not your business to fight what Jesus did. Amen. That's his business. That's way above your great pain. Amen. He's already taken care of it. So you know what he wants to do? Walk in glory. Walk in victory. Huh? How would it be, grandparent, for you to shop about three months before Christmas? Buying stuff for your grandkids, and you say, Now that would not work for that one because that personality is a little different. I can take and use that for that. And that was different. According to that personality, I can find something else. And you find something else. And come Christmas, you wrapped it all up, and you're all sitting there. The gifts are being ready to be handed out. You're sitting there saying, I can't wait till little, little Judy gets a whole necklace. When she sees that, she's going to know it's exactly. What, what I've got in mind and where Grandma's thing knows about and understands her. Can't wait for Jimmy to get a hold of this. And you're just waiting as a grandparent just to see the joy on her face. I got a little granddaughter, great granddaughter, lives here in uh, somewhere up on the Vale. I don't know where it is. I couldn't get there. They'd, they'd tell me how. But she, she's an actress, okay? She does little commercials and stuff. Your commercial. And she, she, she said, Mom, Mama, turn the camera on. And said, Mom, turn the camera, film me, film me. And so she, she got this gift and she looked down and she said, Oh, Mama, thank you. Just what I wanted. Just what I wanted. And she said, Back it up and start all over. I think I can do it better. <laughs> and then back it up and redo it again. And she just go through it all over and over. And she just done, she just had the ability to do it. Now, about seven years old. Listen, what if God has created for you individually that which fits your personality and your character? He knows what you have need of before you even ask. Amen. What if He has put all this gifting stuff together and wrapped it up strictly for you? He even knows how it's supposed to be wrapped. And He's got all this stuff for you. And He said, I've got something for you. I believe you'll really enjoy it. It will release you from all the fears, the doubts, and the confusions. And it's strictly for you. Just remember me. Huh? And you get a hold of it and you say, Oh, I treasure this gift. I treasure the gift. And you just walk for years and years treasuring the gift. And he says, Open it. You will really enjoy it. It will be good for you when you open it. Just open it, open it. And you treasure the wrap and the beauty of the gift more than they do the giver. I'm 
really down to the ears of a lot of our churches. Pentecostals are so full of fear, so full of confusion, so worried that they're going to miss God's will. Huh? And the devil's just got them chasing their own tail. Just for weeks and weeks and months and months. And Paul said, no, 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 you got, you got it wrong, you got it wrong. It's all taken care of. It was taking care of the salvation and the redemption. When I filled you with the Holy Spirit, I've given you all the power you need to live victorious. And I'm giving you the name of Jesus that opens every closed door. At the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue. And I'm giving you that authority. Amen. Why are you still running around afraid that the devil is going to mess your life up? You're wasting time. He has no authority. He's been nailed to the cross. Hallelujah. Boy, a few years ago when that began to sink in on me, I don't know if I was reading uh, Vance Havener or, or uh, 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 I don't know, some of those deriders. And when I began to, to begin to soak in on me, I said, well, thank God. And I took a put, I, I preached a, a series of messages on the defeated foe, the devil, the defeated foe. And I took a big old banner and put it across there, and I said, Devil, you've had it. That's what I did. Put a big old banner across there. Devil, you've had it. And I started preaching what God has done for you and I to live victorious. Yes. Sometimes we get sick because we're human, not because God's mad at us or dropped the ball. You hear that? Amen. Sometimes we get sick because we don't take care of ourselves. Amen. Isn't that right? Amen. Sometimes it's our own fault we get sick. And if the enemy can give you a headache, give you a stomachache or a backache, and get you thinking it's cancer, uh, that's right. hey, he's already got your mind off the healer. He's already got your mind off your victory. And every time that you see anything that starts with C except the cross, you start worrying about it. Is that right? Yeah, that's, that's right. a trick of the devil. He's a liar. Yeah. We tell your children are not going to get saved. Your grandchildren are not going to come back to the Lord. Stop your foot and say, oh yes they are too. I'm dedicated to God. Yeah. I'm dedicated. I tell God all along. They're going to come back to God. We are victorious in Christ Jesus. The devil has been defeated. Remember the parade. Everybody down says, look at there. He's dead. Don't be afraid of him. I don't care what you hear. He's dead. I want you. If you're going to leave this world, I want you to go out in a blaze of glory. You hear that? Got a house over there. Uh, we're living 55 plus. I know we don't look like it, but. <laughs> they didn't even card me. They didn't even card me in the house. They just prove it's your, your 55. They didn't even do it. But even there, there's a, a bunch of rusted old stuff out in front of the house. You know, supposed to be southwestern. Rusted and everything. It's got a sign that says, Rust in Peace. <laughs> rust in Peace. Listen, I don't want you to rust in peace. When you leave here and you draw your last breath, you cross over. I want the devil to say, I sure do miss them. They have been a thorn in me since they got right with God. I want the devil to miss you. And I want the devil to miss me when I'm gone. Amen. I want him to say, you know what? I'm kind of glad he's gone. I lost him, but I'm kind of glad he's gone. He's here to take you a long time. I want you and I that when we cross over, we leave this old world. I want the devil to say, hey, don't have to worry about them praying no more. Don't want to worry about them fasting no more. Them seeking God and, and, and studying the word and faithful church and faithful testimony. Don't have to worry about them. They're out of here. I want him to miss me. And I'm gone. Amen. I want to go out in a place of glory. I'm praying. And I'll go out. I won't go before the rapture of the church. I'd rather have the undertaker than the undertaker. Amen. Amen. It costs a lot of money to be an undertaker. Amen. It does. 
And I think I like to take the rapture. Amen. Amen. The air flight. I'd like to do that. But if not, if not, it's all right. You hear? Amen. Whether in the casket, lay it out. Whether it's a bottle of ashes sitting there with my name on it. I don't care. Say, the Lord God will Lord find you a bunch of ashes. That he will lose me. Amen. He got my number. There's a lot of military guys got eaten by sharks in the wars. God still hasn't lost them. He knows exactly where they are. Everyone's going to appear. God's not going to lose me. Uh, when that time comes, I won't, I won't be able to have the testimony to say, He trusted God right up to the end. I think I told you what, that last Sunday night I preached here, we had a car right down on De Dysart, one south on, on, uh, on 10th. You know, and I tell you what, when we came out and started spinning around and hit that wall, I sat there for a while waiting for a truck to hit me because I, I knew it was right in the middle, it had to be. And I'm waiting for that truck to hit me. And I said, hang on, Mom. She said, Jesus, 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 Jesus. She was giving Jesus a will. I mean, she, she gave him a steering wheel, a spare tire, and everything. She didn't care. She wanted to take care of it. And nothing hit us. Just messed the car up, total car up. And sitting there, and I looked over to her, and I said, are you all right, honey? Are you all right? Is everything all right? The bags had already deplored, and there's fog and powder everywhere and all this. And I said, you all right? And she goes, I, I, I. And well, I said, okay, all right, yeah. So we people come running up and they got her out on the side. The Lord has been so good to me. Yes, thank you. But I don't care, listen, I don't care how it takes me. As I sat there and that thing was just going every way, and I'm saying, this could be it. Yeah. This could be it. Lord, I got a white short sleeve shirt on hanging out. You'll recognize me when I get there. Yeah. <laughs> It's me. And let me tell you something. Don't fear death. No. No. Amen. Jesus took the keys from away from Satan with death, hell, and the grave. Yes. You know what he said? The devil cannot touch you one minute before right. God needs you. That's right. you. That's right. You're on God's time. Yes. You're on God's time. Right. Don't worry about the crossing. Said, where it's a mystery. The death is a minute. Yes, it is. No one can explain about death. But to believers, to be absent in this body is present with the Lord. Wow. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. One step I'm taking here, the next one I'm taking in glory. Yes. Just that quick, I made my change. Amen. Don't weep for me, and don't none of you pray for that I'll come back. Amen. Here? Amen. Don't you try to resuscitate me. Keep your mouth off of me. <laughs> I've been looking forward to going home. Hallelujah. I'm not crazy about dying right now. Amen. But let me tell you something. He's got it all in his hand. I refuse to let the devil rob me of one moment of peace Amen. and victory. Amen. Master, I thank you for these lovely people. They come three, four nights and let me scream, let me scream at them for an hour and night. And they still come back. Thank you, Lord, for the heart, the heart of gold that they have towards you. Now, whatever's going on in their lives, I pray that they'll see the mystery unfold in the whole established in their life. They don't have to let the devil. They're not walking in the kingdom of darkness. They're walking in the kingdom of light. They're under a different rulership now than what they have been. He has no authority to dictate or talk to me. I'm not of his fault. Hallelujah. Bless these in the name of the Lord. Now, Lord, the body gets weary. The mind gets tired. Things sometimes just don't work out right. I just release to everyone in this building a hope of glory that will rise up within them. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I release, Lord, because of their faith and confidence in you. I give the hope that carries on when things don't look right. Thank you for that hope. I place it within each one of you. If there's anyone here, Lord, that has not made it right with you, I pray right now in the name of the Lord, don't lose another moment. He doesn't deserve to have you. Glory to God. Release now your loyalty. Give it to the Lord. He says, just as you are, come to me. 